Hi everybody and welcome to another Cali Cube Tuesdays. I'm Jason Barnard. Today I'm here with Gaurav Sharma. Is that the right way to say it? Yeah, yeah, totally. That's oh wow, perfect. I got it right. How lovely. We're going to be talking about leveling up your content through regular updates and we always start with the song. A quick hello and we're good to go. Welcome to the show Gaurav Sharma. Thank you so much, Jason. This is so nice. Means I'm I'm a little singer, so I won't be able to sing because if somebody hear me singing, they will scream. Trust me. Ah, yeah, <laughs> that so doesn't lovely. stop Just you sure. singing during the show, <laughs> right? So we're going to be talking about leveling up your content through regular uh, updates. I'm really interested in this because at CaliCube right now we have a tendency to try to create more content, and perhaps what we should do is go back through our old content and level up to get more value out of what we already have. Before we do that, we're going to be talking about brand SERPs. Now, your company, Atroc, uh, I found this lovely knowledge panel for Atroc uh, with the Facebook, the Twitter, and the LinkedIn in there. We've also got who is the CEO of Atroc and what does digital marketing do, which means it's understood your topicality and it's understood that who is the CEO of the company is an important piece of information. Anybody who's interested in investigating knowledge panels and brand SERPs, join the Facebook group down there on the left-hand side. And the next one we can see here, founder Gaurav Sharma, and there's your tiny knowledge panel, and you are a business person in Google's mind. It's only found your LinkedIn profile, but from what I understand, your name is incredibly popular, and it's got it all mixed up on the left-hand side. That's something... I would argue that you would want to sort out. There are a lot of Gaurav Sharmas who are very famous, and that's hugely difficult. Have you ever looked <laughs> at trying to get yourself understood by Google, given the competition that you have? Yeah, I, I've tried that way. But uh, like as a, I own an agency, so my focus mostly went for the clients first. So it was always the priority. Yeah. And uh, it's always like you want, always wanted to invest on your business and want to like grow your brand name. But uh, most of the time, I have to like strategize with the client stuff, taking out the client stuff and customer handling and everything. So it consumes a lot of time. So so I never got enough time to invest on my branding. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, from last one and two years, that's what I'm like doing for myself. So it's been like uh, two and a half years that I'm contributing almost 250 plus websites. So I guess post on wow. almost all big websites that you named, HubPost, Tech, TechCrunch, uh, Lifehacker, means all the big names you have uh, them. Uh, I'm all, all, always on there. HubSpot I write for, uh, all big names. Okay, so. brilliant. How do you get those opportunities? They're huge opportunities. Yeah, I mean, so, like been into this industry for 10 years now. So I reach out to like a lot of people. I see a lot of rejections, honestly. It means I email like 10 uh, or like 20 uh, publishers, uh, hardly like two or three response. And I just keep, I, mean, I just make sure that the quality of content is good so that they are like satisfied and happy. And once I get published on one, then I use that as a bait to like send a mail to another publisher that, okay, I just published this one. This one got a lot of shares and reach and a lot of good views. They get excited. Okay, this guy actually contributes a, a valuable content. Right. This is important. Most of the content these days are like crappy content. And that's why publisher hates it, either hates it, and they just don't respond. So it right. took time to build this much. But initially, six months was a terrible one. Means I got a lot of rejections, a lot of rejections because they want right. someone who is into this industry and they understand the content, the value, they understand the users, their audience, mm -hmm. and create the content for the web, that website, not just for the backlink. So, so we're we're, we're looking there. very I mean, much at at bringing value, being patient, and being consistent over time, and accepting rejection, uh, which, is, which is great, great advice. Now, at CaddyQ, we focus on brand SERPs, and we're going to headline sponsor ourselves today, which I love doing, uh, because we have basically three solutions for your brand SERP or your knowledge panel, not for you particularly. Uh, but if you want to improve your brand SERP or your knowledge panel, there is the Brand SERP book for the beginners, intermediate, we have the Brand SERP courses. And for advanced users, we have the SaaS platform, CaliCube Pro, which is really going strong. CaliCube, it's all about your Brand SERP. Now, we finished talking about Brand SERPs, and we're going to come on to content. Leveling up your content by updating it. Number one, I have a site with 300 articles. Where do I start? 
Okay, so one thing, so this is the common problem that we actually see. A lot of publishers who like contributing content from last three, four years, five years, they have like tons of content on the website. Yeah. And they just keep on adding new content every single week or like uh, bi-weekly or whatever. Now the problem comes is uh, after each Google update, Google core update specifically, the older article gets like uh, deranked. So your website was not hit by any update. It just, the article is like too old and Google wants fresh content for, for their audience. So the point is you need to understand that we need to just not create the fresh content every single time. It just upgrade the older content that we already have for the users. Because it went really well for a couple of time on Google. But if you just upgrade the content as per the SERP analysis, because that's, that's a, a key thing. You need to analyze SERP on a regular basis with time. Just take an example. Uh, this is what I do for my clients that uh, for any like money keyword or commercial keyword or the highly targeted keywords or high KDS keyword that you already have that needs to be upgraded every four to six months. So you need to understand uh, if you use Ahrefs, uh, you can go to Keyword uh, Explorer and see if a particular SERP for certain keyword is very sensitive when it's been keep on changing over like six months or 12 months period. Then you need to upgrade that content more often. And if you see a certain keyword that has a low KDS, less competitive, decent volume, like 100, 200 only, then for that kind of keyword, you, you might be able to upgrade that content like after like nine months, 12 months or 15 months. That's something you can wait. So you need to plan out the strategy for your content, see which keywords are like, yeah, your primary keywords, important keywords, and see the, the uh, SERP uh, sensitivity uh, using HRFs. And then prioritize which are the like, top 20 articles top 50 articles that you already have that mm -hmm. you wanted to rank always upgrade those con content on like six months or like uh, eight months time period. And if it's like too sensitive, like the, just to take example, how to start a blog, it's kind of very highly competitive keyword and it's quite sensitive as well. Uh, SERP mm -hmm. changes very fast for that keyword in after every single update so for that part, you need to upgrade that content like every three months or four months to make sure it's always valuable to the user. And it's always fresh and you keep adding some kind of uh, extra value that is something not provided by your competitors so you need to analyze the serp for that keyword understand what are other top 10 uh, website a publisher actually like posting on it and then plan out the whole strategy for one year or two year because right that's so a lot of work, planning the strategy <laughs> A couple of years in advance and having a process whereby these articles come through on a timeline for a specific person within the company to update is a great process to have. Now, when you're updating the articles, what do you need to focus on? Changing the existing text or adding extra information or taking away information? Okay, that's a very important question, yeah. See, what we need to understand is... Uh, for certain keyword and certain queries, what happens is after a certain period of time, like one year or two year, Google just change the whole SERP. So sometime mm -hmm. uh, for certain uh, query, like uh, best uh, AI chatbot, he was likely to submit a uh, share like listicle article. Like this is the exact keyword that had been targeting like in mm -hmm. 2019. So in the beginning, uh, Google was likely to share listicle articles on top 10 uh, list. But after like certain updates in 2020 and 2021, they started posting like what type mm -hmm. of our top and guy article in a few stickle articles. Then in certain situations, we need to understand the SERP analysis. We do the SERP analysis for the keyword. Then we do most of the time we need to like add extra content, like what type of uh, section or headings we need to include. Sometimes mm -hmm. we have to include some FAQs and to come up with the like final conclusion, we need to analyze the SERP of that particular key, uh, keyword every single time like whenever we upgrade because for certain keywords to sensitive and uh, how actually SERP is working now because mm -hmm. Google changes really fast. Well, when you say analyze the SERP, what do you mean? I mean, you've said it a couple of times. But what do you actually do? Do you go in and look at the content of your competitors or do you just look at what's there? And how do you decide what to change? Yeah, so just take an example. Uh, uh, for keyword, uh, previously, like last week, it was ranking on top uh, three spots. And now suddenly, like after a certain Google update, it came to like 12th or 14th. So just uh, 
look into the uh, what other top 10 publishers are doing what are the new maybe uh, they change the whole serp they change the whole title they need to analyze uh, if the heading structure is changed and uh, the top 10 publishers uh, have a different heading structure than yours if the heading structure is different then you need to change the heading structure and uh, you also like me when I actually go into details like i also go into like keyword density as well that what kind of keyword density now it's working out like right now it's something around 1.5 is is ideal a lot of people sometimes use 2.2 like 2.5 as well right now but uh, mm -hmm. keyword density you need to check you need to check the heading structure you need to check the title the type of title like it's a what type listicle how to and then uh, see the faqs and see the structured data if they are actually having uh, FAQ markups, author markups, uh, what kind of markups they have, make sure all these things are as per the new updates and everything. Then you implement all this on your existing articles and you will see that a couple of weeks, uh, it will start ranking on page one again. So right, and you mentioned analyze, keyword that's... density. Do, do, you, do you look at keyword density or do you look at entities and topicality? Yeah, so um, entity and topicality is also important. But uh, ideally, what I do is uh, I see there are certain blogs I've read that keyword density doesn't exist now. Google doesn't care about keyword density. Whatever mm -hmm. keyword you do, you need to talk about clusters. That's that's that is fine. But what we mm -hmm. do is uh, we need to make a certain keyword uh, that you need to a primary keyword for your articles. That is something you focused on. Then you need mm -hmm. to come up with some uh, semantical uh, uh, like synonyms of the article uh, the same keyword or you can say the variation of the keywords and put it in the natural form and break the key phrase into individual words and make sure it's placed in like 1.5 or 1.2 times percentage. This way it's like naturally flowed and uh, like bots will never be able to like analyze, understand that it's like uh, specially targeted for certain keywords because you actually break the whole key phrase, just like uh, how to start a blog. It's a long key phrase. So you divide it into like how to separate uh, start a blog as a separate or this blog word as a separate uh, word and use it uh, throughout the post like 1.5 times individual words mm -hmm. and then keeping the main title mean the keyword into headings h1 h2 couple of times and voila it, it will work for you right so okay that's how so how important it, are, uh, are headings i mean you you mentioned headings as well when, when you break the content down do you change the headings regularly or do you tend to leave them as they are and change the content in the paragraph afterwards uh historically uh usually it doesn't work like we don't have to change the titles most of the time because uh search and the whole search changes after a year or so it means uh, not every update google change the search this slowly changes the serve. So just like uh, take an example, like initially the whole 10 articles are like listicle, but after certain updates, it will be like six articles, seven articles will be listicle and three, four articles will be like how to or guide type. And uh, maybe after certain updates, Google will try to understand that how user experience works on a particular serve mm -hmm. for, for the certain query. If they see like more clicks coming on how to article instead of listicle article, they will start pushing the how to article on the top and listicle article in the, in the downward. So that's something we need to keep a track that, okay, if uh, after certain updates, like Google is pushing more how to article and less listicle mm -hmm. article, or maybe more listicle article and less how to article, or maybe sometimes happens like for certain keywords, there are certain landing pages ranks perform well and less listicle or blog mm -hmm. articles. So we need to understand which keyword perform well, like landing page perform well for listicle, uh, for certain keywords or blog perform for certain keywords. And okay. And here's, here's a, a, a question around that is if you've got a listicle article and all of a sudden you realize that a how-to article is going to rank better, can you just switch the listicle to become a how-to? Yeah, that's something you can do. And, and for these, this, uh, there's another strategy we do is cannibalization. So we write how-to article as well as listicle article as like both two articles for the certain keywords. And you will see, and if your authority is high, this is a certain condition that if your authority is like really, really high, like uh, dr78 plus this is what i've seen uh, like the trend uh if you write uh, two article on a listicle as well as on how to for the same keyword both will perform well somehow both will perform and this is right. something i've seen on minimal websites so, so the authority condition is the there. same time for the same site yes for certain websites it does work it does work 
So okay. one website I'm... I've seen is oberlo.com and uh, influencermarketinghub.com. They have like a lot of mm-hmm. cannibalization keywords and they've been performing really well from like a couple of years. So it's been okay. doing great Super. because their thought is great. <laughs> so, uh, and in the changes that you make on an article, which is most important? Is, is it the, the introduction and the conclusion and we can more or less leave the rest as is? And if we focus on the introduction and the conclusion, we'll be fine? Introduction, introduction is important, totally. Uh, but also, uh, the, while writing the content, the readability part, the, the user experience part, the, you're adding like more images, more uh, like bullet points. You can use it using bucket bridges. So they're like, it's more readable. There's more space out clearly. And uh, it's not like long form at all. Those kind mm-hmm. of activities you need to make. And also I've seen that um, adding a TOC nowadays helps really well in terms of navigation for users. So your experience improves adding a TOC in blog post. So that's another good a, thing. A, that these kind of a, really, a table of contents is, is what you mean by TOC. Table of content, yeah. yeah, yeah. Table of content. <laughs> Yeah, so sorry, just to be really, really <laughs> clear so that I'm sure I fully understood it. We actually uh, did a case study with Microsoft Clarity where we added a table of content and it hugely improved uh, the stickiness of the, web, of the web page and the fact that people actually went through the whole thing. Uh, Microsoft Clarity is absolutely brilliant. We also realized that using pull quotes was really, really cool. Uh, and so that's something I would tend is. to do is add the table of content, add some pull quotes, um, maybe rephrase right. things, but also... What, what do you do if nothing has updated in terms of what you need to say in the article? So I, I've got to update every three months, you tell me, but I've got nothing new to say. What can I do? So in that case, just simply copy what computers are doing just to make sure that you're like, like making Google happy. Because at the end, I understand the knowledge is enough, like limited knowledge that we have. Uh, there's some t- certain things we can speak. But in that case, we need to make sure that we are working for Google so that Google mm-hmm. is happy for, with your content so that they can push it your website. So see what computers are doing, what Google understands for certain keyword mm-hmm. and why your website is at eighth position and why computers are at like first position. Maybe it just, uh, it's not the just content, maybe it's just more backlink as well or the authority or the trustworthiness of the, web, uh, of the website. So folk understand those parameters and then and, and strategy and then go hard. Okay. And so that, well, Mike, we come back to the question is if I've got a lot of content, how do I decide which ones to optimize? You simply do it in a cyclical manner. As you say, the core articles that I have need to be done every three months and all the others need to be done every six months or so, depending on the sense, uh, sense sensitivity of the cert. Um, where, where would I start? I mean, I'm trying to figure out, obviously I start with the core articles, but if I've got 10 core articles, which one do I do first? Okay, so here's the uh, deal. What you can do is, uh, see, for any publisher, there are certain blogs, like uh, 10, 20, 30 blogs, which are like primary blogs that drives most of the traffic uh, to their website. So those, those 10 articles or 20 articles would be the first priority thing they need to upgrade. So they want they, they should not lose their, their audience at all. Otherwise, they will, mm-hmm. like, the, tra- the graph drops and that doesn't look good. So those top 20 articles should be the first priority. Next is the low hanging fu- fruits. So there are certain mm-hmm. keywords that you wanted to rank, but you're ranking somewhere on like second, third page or fourth page. So low hanging fruits would be your second pri- should be your second priority and make sure that uh, they're likely to be come on page one. It just like some kind of content boost is required. So you upgrade those content as the second priority. So if you have like 300 articles, it's very hard to like optimize or upgrade all those articles in like three months right away because yeah. you have limited budget as well. Right. So prioritize on the basis of uh, the primary article, which are like uh, juicy and brings most of the traffic for you uh, and traffic as well as your money as well, like sales page or whatever. Those would be like primary or the affiliate articles. The first priority. Second is the low hanging key, uh, keywords, which are ranking on page two or three. And then your uh, like uh, target keywords that you want to rank that maybe it's like high KDS or it's not ranking anywhere like on fifth or sixth page or maybe not on top 100. Upgrade those articles so that they start coming on like uh, page six, mm-hmm. five, six, seven, and then eventually get on page one. So that will be third priority. So prioritize all these three, uh, like priority one, two, three, and then start seeing the results. Mm-hmm. And eventually okay. you will, when you have more money, you will invest more and move forward. 
Okay. And, and do you see any benefit from changing the featured image or the image that appears in the SERP uh, often next to an article? It, does that help or is that uh, unhelpful? If it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a stock images, it's a useless, but if it's a data graphics, uh, that is some kind of graphics is there and it's meaningful, helpful, that might help sometime. But uh, uh, not great case study I've seen using that, that featured image. No. Okay. And then when you when you update it you leave the original publishing date and you have an updated date um you don't change the publishing date yeah so uh this is uh, another good thing is a lot of website what they do they just don't talk about the dates means a lot of big websites uh, they just don't mention the dates sometimes mm -hmm. uh what i prefer is actually update the like the updated date like whenever you update the content just mention the new date so that a user, it increases the, improves the user experience because any user lands on your blog, they understand, okay, this page is this updated. So they feel good instead of a, a content created or like one that them, okay, this is old article. So they will bounce off. So mention mm -hmm. a updated it. So that will increase the whole user experience. Because right, okay. the main goal is because Google is mostly focused on page experience now. Mm -hmm. And but obviously, your great point to say updated for the user, they can see it, they feel comfortable. What do you do about the date that appears in the Google search results? Because if they show the published date, then it looks very out of date and the person doesn't click. Yeah, so that's why uh, it's better that you don't just post those pub uh, published date. And just have like a one date that says updated as of, so they will pull off that updated it as well, uh, whenever they index they index the page. So don't have like yeah, so that use best thing best thing up. Right, your data oops, that will help date precise and. Which And my, in that case, my, my next question is about links within the page. Do you update the links in the page, the internal links to other pages, or is it better to leave them as they are? Means uh, I, I always go aggressively link, internal linking. Uh, a lot of people say like uh, internal linking is good, which is fine, which is acceptable. Yeah, it is good, but you need to be aggressive. So I have a certain ratio that I uh, take care of. So every, uh, one outbound link there should be four internal linking at least so mm -hmm. if you're adding like uh, like 10 outbound links 10 resources you should have at least 30 to 40 internal linking so that it has to be aggressive not just uh, internal linking that's why i'm always emphasize that you have to be aggressive with your internal linking more interlinking you do better your like structure uh, like website structure will be google will index you better they will understand your content better and will perform mm -hmm. really good so interlinking, you need to be aggressive, not just uh, regular interlinking. And what kind of external links are you adding to the pages? Uh, like case studies or resources or Wikipedia pages or any like case studies or uh, any ebook that you want to refer, uh, or maybe uh, any factual data or statistic mm -hmm. from third party website. So those kind of references, if they're outbound, so they should be like one is to four ratio. That's what I mean. Right. Okay. Uh, I want to uh, absolutely brilliant. That that was really really interesting. And the last question is always the same. In fact, it's a choice of two questions. How does leveling up your content help with branded search? And you can answer that question and the other one. How does branded search help with leveling up your content? Answer one, either or both. Whereof? Yeah. So. Um... Yeah, so I'll answer the question one. So leveling up your content help branded search because see, future is branding. I mean, this is the future. I means 10 years back, it's more like keyword focused always. But if you see the future, it's always be branded. And for branding, you need to put a lot of content and different types of content, not just uh, textual content. You need to come up with some video content, you need to have some audio content, you need to go into multiple areas. So if you put a lot of content, searches the search engines or even the like ai chat chatbots which are coming up these days they're able to like understand you better 
and so that they can push you hard and get you on a page one they will uh, somebody search on chatbot like uh, what's at rock they will pull the data from content because they need content to consume chatbots as well right so if you put a lot of content different types of content this will help your branding go crazy and uh, more brandings mean more target audience more qualified leads more revenue more growth you happy everyone happy so having good content is like uh, super important for the future <laughs> brilliant great content uh, alongside a very solid well understood and impressive brand thank you so much gaurav that was absolutely brilliant now we're going to pass the bot bat on excuse me to ed trifone who's going to be talking next week about leveraging your personal brand to boost the sales process i'm super interested in this uh, he's been helping us at caddy cube with our sales process and i know that he's super smart he's got a lot to share it's going to be awesome could you please pass the bat on yeah definitely man that i think goes to at trifon is is a great guy working on like leveraging your personal brand to push your sales process so next Brilliant. To that's going to be absolutely Trifon. awesome thank you so much gora thank you everyone for watching you get the outro song a quick goodbye to end the show thank you gora thank you jason <laughs> and that was actually pretty good. <laughs> Cali Cube. <laughs> it's all about your brand, Serp.